Hi, I'm Jim Hytel, I'm VP of Security with The Open Group, and I'll be talking to you today about risk analysis, measuring, and managing cybersecurity risk. So for an agenda, I'll talk through uh, why does IT security risk analysis matter? I'll talk through some of the challenges in risk analysis, uh, talk about some of the Open Group's activity in the area of risk analysis over the last few years, uh, and then I'll wind up with a short overview of some of the Open Group cybersecurity activities. So in talking about uh, analyzing risk, I thought I would share a story uh, actually from my childhood that was uh, uh, a classic risk analysis situation. So risk is, is often defined and defined in our uh, open group standards as the probable frequency and magnitude of future loss. So in, in more common terms, uh, how often are bad things likely to happen and what's the impact gonna be? How bad will it be when they do happen? Uh, so I was on a canoe trip when I was uh, in my teens up in the, the wilderness of uh, northern Minnesota and Canada uh, and we encountered a set of rapids like you see on this slide. Uh, so we had to make a decision uh, in the course of uh, a very short time, do we take the risk, do we run the rapids or not? Um, in our case, uh, what happened to us was what happened to uh, the fellows you see on the second photograph here. So uh, we got broadside in the rapids, our canoe wrapped around a rock, and uh, uh, you know, bad things happen. <laughs> the impact, uh, uh, which we failed to really think through before we decided to run these rapids, could have been a lot worse than it was, because the canoe could have been unsalvageable, our packs could have floated away, never to be found again, and we could have been in a very bad situation. In our case, uh, we were able to pound the dent out of the canoe, uh, recover our packs, and, and very little damage done. But I, I tell this story uh, really to illustrate that anything that helps you make better decisions around risk uh, is a good thing. And so as I talk about some of the work the Open Group has done here, I hope you'll see that uh, things like the risk taxonomy standard uh, and the risk analysis standard can help you to do a better job of analyzing risk, determining how bad the impact of, of uh, something bad happening can be uh, and make more informed risk, risk decisions. So I'll, I'll start by talking a little bit about uh, the changing threat landscape, which I think is fundamental to uh, risk analysis. Uh, clearly, in today's world, you've got uh, issues like uh, highly skilled, highly motivated attackers attacking our IT systems. You've got advanced persistent threats, uh, maybe nation states, uh, other countries attacking critical infrastructure. Um, you know, it's a different threat landscape than it was 15 or 20 years ago when you had, all you had to worry about was teenage hackers trying to get into, into computer systems. So uh, the threat is very different than it used to be. You've got hacktivism. Uh, it, the threats are real. Uh, and that really elevates the importance of doing effective risk management and risk analysis. Uh, the other thing that uh, really has changed uh, in terms of IT security risk analysis is that there's huge and dramatic shifts in our IT system. So you've got things like big data, BYOD, cloud, uh, consumerization generally. Um, all of those are, are changing the nature of our IT systems. They're changing where information is stored. And so I think you have to really think about what the threats are uh, and analyze the risk to your data um, you know, in the context of all that change in your IT system. So uh, clearly that also elevates the importance of doing effective risk analysis. Uh, some of the drivers for, for more effective IT security risk management uh, include just getting a better understanding of your risk and then, you know, effect effectively equipping you to make better decisions around how to manage it. Um, helping you to prioritize security spend. So, you know, the, the IT security budget that you've got, is it really being applied to the highest priority risks uh, and, you know, getting an understanding of how much risk reduction you're, you're buying with those security investments. Uh, so helping you prioritize that. Basically helping you protect your brand. Um, in, in today's world, uh, if I look at, for instance, the U.S., where there's a lot of data breach disclosure laws, uh, if you're losing the information of your customers, you're now having to go public with that, and that can hurt a company's brand and reputation. Uh, and then finally, meeting compliance requirements is, is a driver for better security risk management as well. Uh, and as, as I alluded to um, earlier, uh, risk management really 
uh, is intended to inform your information security spending to let you know if you're spending wisely on security controls, if your security controls are effective, is your risk increasing or decreasing, uh, if you're protecting the right information assets, um, you know, are you, uh, have you left unprotected assets that need to be protected? So uh, done right, risk analysis or risk management helps you to, uh, to make better decisions around things like that. So let's talk for a minute about some of the challenges in, in risk management. Um, one that we saw uh, five years ago when we started our work in the area of risk analysis is, is, has been the lack of a consistent and standard taxonomy for risk. So ensuring that when even security professionals are talking about things like threat, vulnerability, risk, uh, that they all uh, mean the same thing. Uh, and then more importantly, when you go to talk to senior management, uh, just enabling a common uh, vocabulary and understanding of what those, those terms are. Uh, a second challenge, area of challenge is in the area of measurement and calibration. So one of the things that we've seen uh, around risk analysis and the way it's done sometimes is that ordinal scales, so high, medium, low, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, um, re really can mislead people in terms of understanding how much risk is really present. So, um, and, and certainly you can't take ordinal scales and, and uh, compute with them. So you can't multiply risks using high, medium, and low. Uh, you come out with meaningless data. Uh, so those can be kind of dangerous to use. Um, you've also got uh, judgment issues uh, that are inherent in humans in the way that we process information. So we all have biases that are built up over the years uh, that can oftentimes lead us to make wrong risk conclusions and estimations. Uh, generally, you've got in, in area of risk management a lack of good data to point to, or frequently you do. Um, so you have to be creative about finding sources of information uh, to make your risk decisions based upon. Um, communicating about risk can be a challenge, uh, as I mentioned earlier, so communicating with senior management about uh, risk and, and uh, vulnerability and threat and so forth. Uh, senior management tends to care about risk a lot, but not so much about things like vulnerabilities and very technical terms. So uh, framing the risk discussion in terms that your senior managers can understand is key. And finally, compliance can be a risk management challenge. Uh, many of the compliance regulations require you to, to do a risk analysis or risk assessment, uh, but they don't provide much guidance in terms of how to do one. Um, so, um, you know, you have a driver to do risk analysis, but, uh, you know, we, we saw a gap there in terms of guidance about how to do effective risk analysis. And we wrote a standard called the Risk Taxonomy Standard about five years ago now. Uh, we recently updated it uh, just this week, actually, in October 2013. We came out with a new version of that standard. Uh, it's freely available on our website. Uh, we also, in the process of developing a certification program that I'll talk about in a few moments, uh, we wrote a second standard called the Risk Analysis Standard, uh, which talks more to the process as aspects of how to do an effective risk assessment. Uh, we also wrote a couple of guides um, a couple of years ago. So one is uh, it's called Requirements for Risk Assessment Methodologies, and it talks about some of the practical aspects of doing an effective risk assessment. Uh, and then finally, we wrote a cookbook showing how to use the risk taxonomy standard, which is based upon FAIR, Factor Analysis of Information Risk, uh, how to use that taxonomy with ISO 27005, which is another popular risk management uh, framework standard from ISO. Uh, and then finally I'll mention we uh, published a fifth uh, document called the Dependency Modeling Standard that looks at uh, risk that you inherit from other uh, parts of your supply chain perhaps. So it's uh, dependent risk that you inherit from other organizations, kind of an interesting area. Uh, then the Risk Analysis Standard, as I mentioned, uh, adds the process pieces uh, uh, regarding risk analysis and covers things like uh, an introduction to fair-based risk analysis, uh, measurement and calibration issues uh, that are necessary to do an effective risk analysis, uh, the risk analysis process itself, and then finally it talks to some basic security contr control considerations uh, when you're looking at, at the mitigation side of this. So you've uncovered some risk and you want to understand uh, how best to mitigate it, so it talks to, to some of those available security controls. 
Uh, and then the requirement for risk assessment methodologies, as I mentioned, it's, it's really a companion document, a guide that gets into things like quantitative versus qualitative measurement, uh, the need for subject matter expert involvement in doing effective risk analysis, and some of those data gathering issues around uh, where do you find data to, ba to base your risk decisions on. Uh, and then the ISO uh, 27005 cookbook uh, really addresses that question of if, I'm use, if I want to use a, a detailed quantitative risk analysis methodology in the context of uh, using ISO 27005 as a risk uh, methodology, how do I do that? How do I relate the terms and the, the things that we gather in a fair-based risk analysis to, to those same things in ISO? So uh, this week at the Open Group Conference here in London, uh, besides introducing the two standards that I mentioned, uh, we're also launching the Open Fair Risk Certification Program. It's a people certification program. Uh, and over the next few slides, I'll talk about uh, what that program involves and, and how to get involved in that. So Open Fair Certification is a knowledge-based certification based upon a candidate's knowledge of fair-based risk analysis and the principles, the taxonomy that I mentioned, uh, and the risk analysis standard. Uh, it requires passing an exam at a Prometric test center, um, so we offer those exams worldwide via our partner Prometric. Uh, we'll have accredited training courses uh, coming soon. The trainers, uh, and we have a number of them that are, are interested and committed to the program, will start accrediting their courses as of November 1st of this year. Uh, and so then at that point, when we have accredited courses, you'll have the option of, of taking a course, but you can also self-test for, for the exam just by studying the two standards, um, which uh, really comprise the body of knowledge for the, the certification program. So that's the risk taxonomy and the risk analysis standard. So currently, there's uh, one level of certification in the program. It's Open Fair Foundation. Uh, and it's really a test of knowledge of terminology and those basic risk concepts that you find in FAIR and, and in the two standards and the core principles of uh, doing a FAIR-based risk analysis. So the, the risk taxonomy standard, as I mentioned, uh, it is based upon FAIR, Factor Analysis of Information Risk, and it's a leading quantitative risk assessment methodology that's in use by a number of large organizations around the world. We have plans to do a second level of certification, a more advanced level, uh, in 2014, so look for that sometime next year. Uh, and then in terms of the exam itself, to tell you a little bit about it, it, it is a multiple choice exam, uh, 80 questions, 120 minutes. Uh, it's a supervised exam that's uh, not an open book, uh, closed book exam, and uh, you can get more details uh, by going to the Prometric uh, website and looking up uh, the Open Group FAIR certification. I think the test is OG041. Uh, and then I, I alluded to this, but uh, trainer accreditation will start November 1st, uh, requires that the trainers pass a supplemental exam uh, so that they're able to apply FAIR principles to a specific risk scenario and come up with the right conclusions and answers. Uh, it requires a commercial license for the trainer, as with our other TOGAF and Archimed training programs. Uh, and we'll also have a licensable course, training course, from the Open Group for trainers to use coming in November of this year. So let's uh, talk a little bit about why this matters. Uh, to risk analysts, you know, we think it matters uh, having a couple of open standards to base your risk analysis on uh, provides the basis for better quantitative risk assessments. Uh, and also having a professional certification program can help demonstrate your competence and knowledge uh, to potential employers. To employers, obviously, it matters because uh, they can get a, a larger pool of qualified risk analysts uh, as we get more people certified through the program. Uh, and then for trainers and consultants, we think that this is a, a new business area and a rapidly growing area uh, that may make sense to, to offer training in, so in interesting development. Uh, just generally, why does this matter? Uh, as I mentioned at the start of the presentation, it, there's ever-increasing cybersecurity threats, um, more and, and more uh, valuable information being stored in our IT systems, and therefore a real need to understand what are those risks and how do they affect the business and how can we best reduce the risk and manage it um, to uh, protect our enterprises. So. 
We think it's a valuable program, and I'd, I'd encourage you to take a look at it. There's more information on the Open Group website about the program. Uh, and then finally, I thought I'd wrap up with an overview of uh, some of the other Open Group security activities. Um, so we, security is one of those things that, that really strikes across the Open Group in, in lots of areas. Um, it certainly affects architecture. It affects uh, the new Platform 3.0 work that we're doing. Uh, security work here at the Open Group is done in principally three different forums. So we have the security forum where we do standards and best practices uh, for information security. Uh, we focus our work in the areas of security architecture and information security management. Uh, and risk management is obviously a big, big part of that activity. Uh, and we've also just, uh, as of this week actually, moved the activities that were done in the Jericho Forum for the last 10 years. Uh, around thought leadership and uh, er things like deprimerization and cloud computing security. Uh, the Jericho Forum has sunsetted their activities and we've moved all that work for um, uh, care and maintenance into the security forum. So uh, some of that work will continue uh, in, in the security forum. Uh, the second uh, group that does security work is our real-time and embedded systems where there's work done on things like mill systems uh, and software assurance. Uh, and then finally, the Open Trusted Technology Forum uh, is a forum that we started a couple of years ago that really looks at the issues of supply chain security, uh, looking at uh, think threats to the supply chain in the areas of currently taint and counterfeit. So trying to ensure that the, the products, IT hardware and software products that you buy and consume uh, come from reliable suppliers and, and uh, have a known set of security characteristics associated with them. So that's a, a broad brush of uh, the security activities in the open group. There's a number of projects that we're doing in conjunction with the architecture forum to add security to the next version of TOGAF um, and in other areas of the organization as well. So thank you for your time and uh, we invite you to find out more about the open group security activities uh, in the areas of risk around the open fair certification and the two standards. Uh, or just generally by visiting our website at uh, www.opengroup.org. And uh, we invite you to get involved as well. Uh, the Open Group is, is really run through our members, um, they're run by our members, and, uh, and we're always looking for folks to contribute to our efforts. Thank you.